All right, in this lesson right here, what we're going to do is take a look at how you can build a very simple level. Trust me, guys, this is very simple. But before we get started, the first thing I want Logan to do is show you guys how you can navigate around the viewport. We will be covering this in the next lesson, which is titled Viewports, in case anybody decides to skip the very basic level creation lesson right here. So expect to hear this again. But I want you guys to see how you can navigate around in case you're wanting to follow along with this lesson. Okay, inside your perspective view, if you want to simply look around, you can hold the right mouse button and move the mouse around, and that's basically like, basically like standing and looking around. Okay, very cool. If you need to actually move the camera, you can use the left mouse button, and drag, dragging forwards and backwards will actually move the camera, while left and right is still used for turning the camera. Okay, and if we needed to pan up, down, left, or right? Then hold both mouse buttons, and you can pan the camera around. All right, excellent. Well, that's good enough. If they, want know, if they want to know more, they can go to the next lesson. Now, starting out right now, we are with a brand new map. There's nothing that's been constructed yet, and we are in a world of solid mass. So, as we said in the introduction to Unreal Ed, we need to go in there and start carving out space where we'll actually have our level exist or our map exist. So to do that, we're going to use some brushes. So, Logan, you want to go ahead and show us how we can, let's say, create a cylinder brush? Okay. If I simply left-click on the cylinder once, you'll see that we get a construction brush outlining where a cylinder could be created. Exactly, where it could be created. So right now, we haven't actually created anything. We haven't subtracted any space out of this world. So at this point, Logan could go in there and he could replace this or, or move it around or make any adjustments that he needs to. And once he's happy with its location, then he could go in there and actually subtract this space out. So go ahead and subtract it out. So if we come down and hit subtract. So he's hitting subtract from the CSG operation tools over there. And you can see that it has now created, well, a room, if you will. In fact, if he goes down there right now to it and inside it, you'll actually get the feeling that you're inside a room. Okay, and we of course have a default texture that's been applied. That's only because we haven't gone in there and selected a texture ahead of time, but we'll do that in just a minute. What I do want to point out right now is if you take a look in the top viewport, it looks like we've only got one brush in the scene, when actually we have two. We've got our construction brush, and we now have a new subtraction brush that we just created. So, Logan, you want to go ahead and show them how we can move that construction brush out of the way so we can see both of these guys? Okay, to do a simple move, you can left, or yeah, you can left click on the construction brush once, hold control and left drag, and you can move it out of the way. Okay, and if your construction brush is, let's say you can't find it for some weird reason or whatever, is there a very easy way to always be able to select and move it? Right, if you have nothing selected, say if you clicked out in space and deselected everything, now if I did a control left drag, it will auto select the construction brush. Okay, very nice. All right, so now you can see we have two brushes that look pretty much the same in the top viewport. We've got the one on the left, which is our construction brush, and the one on the right, which is a brown color, which is our subtraction brush. Now, since we've subtracted some space out, we did talk about in the introduction lesson that we could actually add mass back in. So let's do, I don't know, Logan, let's say a cube this time. And when he comes over here to the primitives and he clicks on cube, watch what happened to your construction brush. It has now changed to a cube, okay? So now if he wants, he can go ahead and take that cube and place it over in the middle of the subtraction brush that he's already made, okay? Now, we don't see it down below. That's There you go. You see it now because he just clicked. That's because the viewport didn't update automatically until he clicked down there. And we'll be talking about that more in the next lesson. But now let's go ahead and come over to the side and do another CSG operation. This time, let's do an add. Okay, so look at that. Now we've got a room that's kind of got this square pillar, if you will, in the middle of it. Okay, now take a look at this. Go ahead in the top viewport and move that construction brush out of the way. And you'll notice now, of course, we've got three different brushes in the scene. But as far as the actual brushes that are doing the work right now, the subtraction and the addition brush, notice that their colors are different. One is a brownish color. One is a blue color. Everything that's the brown color indicates a subtraction brush, and everything that's blue indicates an addition brush. Does that make sense, Logan? Right. Okay. So now... Let's say we wanted to delete these out. This is a very important concept that I believe everybody needs to grasp from the very beginning, and it deals with rebuilding geometry. If he goes up to his top view right now and he selects that center addition brush by simply clicking on it with the left mouse button, you can see it's selected there in the perspective view, and he hits delete on his keyboard, Okay, you'll notice in the top view that it's gone. 
But if you look down in your perspective view, it's still there. Wait a minute. What's going on here? We need to rebuild our geometry for these changes to take effect. Logan, you want to go ahead and talk about that for a second? Right. It's what it needs. What we need to do now is we still we actually have the geometry still there. It's just that the brush is gone and it hasn't recalculated the geometry off of the brushes yet. We can do that by clicking on Rebuild Geometry, and if we click that, we can see it. It's, there's no longer a brush there, so there's no longer any geometry there. All right, very nice. So let's do this now. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for that large room. Let's go ahead and select and delete it. And now let's create just a very simple room, if you will. Yeah, go ahead and rebuild. All right, there. Now we're back to a world of solid mass, and nothing's been cut out. Let's go ahead now and make a very simple square-like room. Okay, let me drag cube back to the center. Okay, so let's talk about by right-clicking on any of these primitives over here, we're going to get a dialog, and inside this dialog, we can go in and we can make various settings to the actual brush. For example, if I was to change the width, I can go ahead type in a number. Now you notice that doesn't instantly change the brush. It basically has to rec uh, recreate the construction brush with these new settings. That's done by hitting the build button. That's very simple, very simple. Okay, so go ahead and select something that you're happy with. Another thing to point out that's pretty important is to make sure that you're working with numbers of multiples of two. This will really help when making sure that everything snaps to the grid. And trust me, grid snapping when you're doing level design is very important. Exactly. As a matter of fact, if a, if a multiple of, say, greater than 2, say 4, 8, or 16 works for you, go ahead and use those because that way you can snap to an even larger grid setting and it's quicker and easier. Absolutely. And you'll notice that we also have other settings that we're not going to get into right now, but we do have things like wall thickness, a group name. We can hollow it out if we wanted to, or we can make it tessellated if we didn't want polygons, but we wanted triangles. And some of these things get into issues that we'll be dealing with a little bit later on. But right now, Logan set a very basic 256, 512 by 512 room. And before, he, before we move out of this, I do want to go ahead and spend just a second and talk about our character, our player that's going to be running around in the level. Make sure to give at least, I don't know, about 96 units it's for the player to be able to actually walk through the room. And I don't know, about what, 64, Logan? All right, use that as a bare minimum for if you're going to have an area you have to crouch through. Exactly. But just be forewarned, with 64, I believe your head is actually sticking up into the geometry, so it looks a little bit funny. Okay, Logan, so I'll let you go ahead and continue. Okay. So we have a new construction brush. And now if we want to actually carve this out, we need to go ahead and make another subtraction. So I'll go and subtract that out. He could have also hit Control S on the keyboard as well, which is just a shortcut key for doing a subtraction like that. Now you'll notice that we have this default texture that we was talking about a second ago, and this is going to actually bring the texture browser into the whole mix of things right now. So go ahead and open up the texture browser, which is located up here in the top right there. And we, we didn't have any textures actually selected, so we got the default texture applied. If we would have come into the texture browser first and have loaded and selected a particular texture, then that texture would have been applied to all of the walls inside of our room right there. Now, you'll notice that we've already got a bunch of textures loaded, and these are default textures that you'll always have when Unreal Ed first comes up. But we've got various packages that we can go in there and open up as he's now clicking the Open Texture Package dialog. And from in here, you see there's a ton ton of these different packages. And basically all these are are files that contain a series of texture maps and these textures are all themed if you will. Basically they all go together. Right. So Logan's going to select which one are you selecting? I'm going to grab humanoid architecture. Humanoid architecture and he's going to go ahead and say open and it loads it in and now you're going to see we have more level like looking textures if you will. And now, Logan, go ahead and show them how we can apply some of these textures to the walls over there. Well, to do a very simple texture application, you could left-click once on, say, the floor surface, and you can tell it's selected by the blue tint it puts on it. And then if we select a texture from the texture browser, it will simply get applied to whatever was selected. Very nice. If you need to select multiple faces, you can hold control while clicking on them. Notice how if I just left click, it keeps replacing the selection, whereas if I hold control and then click an additional face, then I can select multiple faces. Excellent. 
And then there's another little shortcut key in there if we need it to select all of the faces for the given brush, which is? You could use Shift-B if you wanted to grab every face. If you grab a single face or multiple, but then hit Shift-B, it'll go ahead and grab every face on the brush you're working with. Excellent. And trust me, this can be very handy. So, Logan, go ahead and take just a second and set some textures up in there. Um, you know, I'm not looking at them now, but you notice I have these extra two faces that are looking away from the camera right now. So I'm going to go ahead and use the Shift-B shortcut, grab the entire brush, Deselect the floor and ceiling. Now I have all. I've just had the four walls. Which he deselected, by the way, by just holding Control, which which really acts like a toggle. And then he just selected on the ones that were already selected, floor and ceiling, and those became deselected. Right. So let me drop down to the uh, walls category. So basically, we have our packages, and inside our pack packages is a bunch of different textures, and they're all categorized for us ahead of time to make finding textures very easy. So we just switched over to the walls category. If for whatever reason you wanted to view all the textures in the package all at once, you could just hit all, and then it'll just list all of them out. If you want to keep your display cleaner or, your, or you know what category you're looking for, you can turn that off and then sort by categories. Okay. So let me just click on, say, the first wall texture. Get something applied to the walls. And lastly, I'll click once on the ceiling, grab a ceiling, and apply it. All right, very nice. Okay, so now we've got a very simple level. Are we ready to play yet? Not quite. Not yet? Oh, man, come on. How much work do we got here? I guess we'd probably need an actual player start, right? Right. The game needs to know where to put you when you first spawn into the level. Kind of makes sense. So how would we go about doing that? It's very simple. You can simply right-click on the floor where you want the player start, and from the right-click menu, you have the ability to add a player start. Okay, very nice. Now, let me see something. Go ahead and right-click again. And by looking in there, there's uh, we see add static mesh, add karma actor. There's a few things in there, but if I wanted to add, let's say, a weapon into this, maybe I want a rocket launcher in there. Why don't I see a rocket launcher in that selection of things to add? Well, there's a lot of stuff in a game, and if you threw everything in that menu, it'd become <laughs> way too huge to deal we need with. A menu with a scroll bar. So if you actually did want a rocket launcher, well, first the way the game now works is you would add a weapon base first and assign a rocket launcher to that weapon base. So this is going to actually introduce us to another browser. The Actor Class Browser. The Actor Class Browser. And if I go down to Pickup Base, expand that, then we have Weapon Base. Hey, Weapon Base. Now, to actually add this, if I click on it so that it's selected, then go back to the level, bring up my right-click menu, you can see that that actor that I had selected is now in the right-click menu. So this is how you would decide where you want to add it into your level. That's very easy. So go ahead and add it, and there you go. And... Now, how would we switch that over now so that we could actually make sure that it was a rocket launcher that gets spawned? Well, we need to set one of its properties. To do that, we can right-click on the weapon base itself, bring up its properties, and down to weapon base. There we can select what kind of weapon, weapon we want to spawn. Hey, that's pretty simple. Set it to a rocket launcher and close that dialog out. Excellent. So that's going to now spawn a rocket launcher for us. All right. So right now, if we actually took and rebuilt this geometry and went in to play it, what we're going to see is all of our textures basically at the default brightness right now. There's going to be no sort of interesting lighting whatsoever going on. Is that correct there, Logan? Right. Okay. That's because we have no lights in our scene. So it would probably be a good idea if we actually took just a second and actually added a light into the scene. So to do that... Again, all Logan needs to do is pick the area that he's interested in actually adding the light, right-click, and then you'll see Add Light Here. Okay? And he can go ahead and click on the light if he wants to, and we can go back into Properties. And then from in here, if we came down, we can adjust the lighting brightness, the hue, the saturation. So we can start adjusting color, how bright the light is. Uh, and there's other effects that we can do as well that we're going to be covering a little bit later on when we start lighting our more serious level. But, all right, let me go ahead and close out the properties real quick. Now, take note. We don't see any of this lighting actually in our scene in this perspective viewport right now. Hmm. Why not? Well, we haven't built lighting yet, so it doesn't know, it hasn't calculated any shadow maps. Okay, so to build lighting, it's very simple. We just go back to the toolbar at the top or to all of our different build icons and click build lighting. And take a look at that. We've got some illumination going on. And yeah, you can see where it's brighter near the light, and then it fades off to darkness. And, of course, we may want to grab the light and actually move it straight down a little bit. And what that will do is apply just a little bit more illumination to our ceiling as well. And we could set the brightness. There's a whole bunch of different things that we could do. So at this point, Logan, do we basically have a playable level now? Yes, this would load in and be 
basically playable. Now, I don't think we're going to win any awards with this particular level. I mean, it's just, you know, four simple walls, a floor, and a ceiling. But in the end, it does demonstrate the very basics behind creating a level or a map that's playable inside of Unreal. Okay, so with that, what we're going to do now is actually, it's a good idea, let me point this out, especially when you're working with simple maps or you've got a very powerful machine, to just kind of do a build all, just in case you may have forgot to rebuild your geometry or any of your changed lights at any point. So we can come up here to the top and click the build all real quick, and this will just rebuild all geometry, all lights, make sure everything's good. And now we can just simply move our mouse up to the joystick right here, and this will allow us to actually play the map. Now let me point this out. We haven't actually save the map at the moment. Is that going to cause a problem? No, it's not. The way that this, uh, the method that this uses is it actually saves your map to a temp file first. So no, even if you had saved your map, it doesn't make any difference. It'll save to that temp map, then load that temp map into the game. Oh, that's very handy. All right, so with that out of the way, now what we need to do is go ahead and launch it, but our recording technology changes right here for actually recording in-game. So we're going to actually stop the recording of this, and so you guys are going to see an instant flash, and we're suddenly going to be inside the game for this level. So here comes that flash. All right, so here we are inside the new level that we just created. Logan, I must admit that was quite easy to actually build this level and play it. Yes, it was. Okay, so you can see that we've got the textures. We've got a little bit of dim lighting going on. And if we look over to the left-hand side, we'll see we've got our rocket launcher. Now, I would like to go ahead and point out that we are currently holding a rocket launcher only because we spawned into the level just a second ago and grabbed one before we realized, oh, It'd probably be a good idea if we actually record this. So you can see we do have our spawn point for the rocket launcher. Is there anything else, Logan, that we should probably spend just a second talking about while we're in here actually looking at the level right now? Well, you can tell that that's where our light would, uh, where we placed our light. Okay. Well, I guess not then. So that pretty much is going to wrap up this lesson right here on how to build your first very basic level inside of Unreal Ed. So from here, we're going to be moving on. And in the next lesson, we're going to be taking a look at the viewports inside of Unreal Ed. And we'll start advancing some of the things we've been kind of quickly brushing over now inside Lesson 1 and Lesson 2 up to this point. So thanks a lot, guys.